All right, joining the show now to talk about what we've seen and what's to come this week for the Miami Dolphins. John Kinjemi, Kimbo Camper Fellows, thank you for joining the show. Sure. Let's start with our resident quarterback, John Kinjemi. John, what are we going to see this week, uh, and what have we really seen this week from Josh Rosen leading up to this preseason game? Is he going to maybe push Fitzpatrick to maybe get a starting job? at least against the Falcons. Well, I think he's pushed, yeah. and he's pushed during practice, especially during Saturday scrimmage. I still think Ryan Fitzpatrick is the leader in the clubhouse and will get the start. Mm -hmm. But I've been impressed by the way Josh has worked him, himself into not only the conversation, but now battling for the starting spot with more consistency. It looks like he has a better grasp of the offense. He looks like he's more decisive with the football. And he's still enabled to play on the edge and take some chances out there. Mm -hmm. You have to do that, but it has to be educated. I think earlier in the OTAs and earlier during training camp, he was still getting a grasp of the offense. Now, I think he has a better semblance of what he wants to do within the parameters of this offense, and it's allowing his ability to shine through. Yeah, he, he caught up. He said this week <clears throat> the first month was like trying to drink water out of a, mm -hmm. out of a fire hose or trying to catch up. Okay, uh, Bo, a little bit of a shakeup in the coaching staff mm -hmm. this week. Pat Flaherty, Dolphins offensive line coach, was let go by yep. Brian Flores. In comes Dave DeGuglielmo. We'll just call him Googs yep. to make it easy it's for a lot easier. Yeah. For, 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 <laughs> everybody so why the change and what's going to happen especially at the guard position we may have yeah. two rookies getting a lot of playing time here. Well, I, I think when you look at it, it's pretty clear. We're looking for a youth movement on that offensive line. They had a number of guys, Will Hold and some other guys moving around there. But as soon as Googs comes in, here comes in your, your draft picks. You get Michael Dieter comes in, and you get Shaq Calhoun, guy that comes from Mississippi State. He's playing the other guard position. Jesse Davis kicks out to the tackle. And so I think they're going with the youth movement up front. Mm -hmm. and, and I think Googs is a guy that understands what Brian Flores wants, understands what he wants to see out of his offensive line. And he He's going to be charged with taking a very young line and trying to solidify that so that whether it's Fitzpatrick or whether it's Rosen has some time to stand, stand, stand back there and do what they want to do. Also, got to get some guys that get some movement up there in the front. One thing I looked at out there this week, when they put that line up together, that offensive line, they're about 6'7", 6'5", 6'6". That's yeah. a big, tall it's offensive line across the board, which makes it a little more difficult than those defensive linemen to kind of get their hands up and, and create problems for the quarterbacks. John will, will not only create problem for uh, the defensive ends there, but is it going to free up Kalen Balazs, Kenyon Drake? That, that, that battle there is heating up as well. Can we see one of those guys really kind of take the lead, or is this going to be a running back by committee? I think somebody's going to take a lead, but it might be for a day. It might yeah. be for two days or three days. I think you're going to see a heavy dose of both Drake and Balage in the Miami Dolphin offense. Mm -hmm. This is a philosophy where you want to run the football, you want to be aggressive at the point of attack, but yet you need to catch the football out of the backfield as well. And I think both of these guys are a terrific complement to one another. Drake is the quick twitch guy. He can make you miss in the, in the secondary and mm -hmm. has that electrifying speed. Balage is a bigger back, but yet I think he's more of a, a streakier type of back. He, he's a, a, a slender guy when he gets through the hole, and then he's he's full shoulders and knees and, and elbows going yeah. at you the rest of the way. So I think it's a great combination, a good blend at the running back spot. And now playing behind a fullback yeah. in Chandler yeah. Cox gives these guys a, a little bit more of a thumper mentality. Yeah, don't forget about Mark Walton. Maybe they'll That's change, right. it, change it pace there, too. He's and he's looked pretty good. Yeah, he's got some experience as well. Uh, Bo, everyone, every, well, every year I should say, everyone looks for that guy who's going to surprise everyone. Uh, is Preston Williams at wide receiver, maybe a guy in the group who can make this roster, a guy undrafted? Well, you know, he's a guy that after every practice, you talk about him. Right. You know, so he's put himself in the mix. And, and right now, it, it, you know, it's his job to lose right now. I'm not talking about a starting guy, but certainly a guy that's going to get some opportunity to get some play and make this roster. Mm -hmm. You know, the only thing that's going to hinder him is if he goes into preseason games, leaving the ball on the ground. And then we've seen that before where guys have shown early in training camp in offseason uh, pro workouts. Yeah. And then once the, the lights come on, the ball hits the ground a few too many times. But I think he's shown right now that he's got the skill set. He's a big, tall guy. He's going to be difficult on smaller defensive backs to cover. I think they're going to give him every opportunity, not only to earn a roster spot, to put himself right in the middle of that mm -hmm. rotation in the wide, wide receiver position. How about after the scrimmage on Saturday? Yep. Uh, X Xavier Howard saying yeah. this guy's got all the traits yep. of a first rounder. Pretty high compliment no from doubt. a pro bowler. Yep. <laughs> That's not bad. Uh, uh, Bo, uh, I want to ask you about the pass rush because the Dolphins last mm -hmm. year, 29th in the league in, in, in sacks, just yep. 31. 
So uh, where do the sacks come from this year? Well, you, you lose Cameron Wake, you lose Andre Branch, mm -hmm. you, you lose William Hayes, you lose some other guys that give you some pressure. So I think they're going to have to go non-traditional when it comes to their pass rush. You don't have that traditional defensive end that's coming off the corner, so that means your linebackers are going to have to be involved. You saw, uh, yeah. you saw a sack by Jerome Baker in the scrimmage. Also, I think you're going to see the corners and the safeties involved in blitzing. Scheme is going to be what gives this Dolphin defense pressure on the quarterback and so I think you're going to see a lot of multiple looks up front a lot of different people come from coming from different angles and, and what I would call that casual defense where some guys are just standing around and lurking around going in and out and then when the ball snap you got to figure out who's dropping in coverage who's coming to put pressure on the quarterback. Yeah I'm wondering if the defensive side of the ball will maybe be that Brian Flores uh, Patriot way yep. style. Uh, John Real quick, who's going to play opposite Xavier and Howard? It seems like we have this question every year. Who's going to be the other number one corner? Well, right now it's Eric Rowe. I think he's getting a lot of the first team reps, and mm -hmm. he's he's come on. I think that early in training camp he was still going over technique and where they wanted him to do. Now it looks like he belongs out there, at least for the last few practices. So I'm hoping that that's the guy that emerges. But there's plenty of competition. Still a lot of training camp and preseason yeah. left to go. Yeah, still plenty of time left to go. All right, don't forget, Camp Dolphin every weeknight after the news leading up to the first preseason game. So we got four more before the Dolphins take on the Falcons.